J.D. Vance's remarks center on concerns about free speech, individual rights, and safeguarding the First Amendment. He emphasizes the importance of being able to voice dissent in the face of censorship, whether it comes from the government or corporate entities. Vance frames censorship as a threat to democracy, expressing worry that influential figures, such as Kamala Harris, and powerful corporations are leveraging their authority to silence voices that challenge their narratives. Let's talk about the state of democracy, the top issue for Americans after the economy and inflation. After the 2020 election, President Trump's campaign and others filed 62 lawsuits contesting the results. Judges, including those appointed by President Trump and other Republican presidents, looked at the evidence and said there was no widespread fraud. The governors of every state in the nation, Republicans and Democrats, certified the 2020 election results and sent a legal slate of electors to Congress for January 6th. Senator Vance, you have said you would not have certified the last presidential election and would have asked the states to submit alternative electors. That has been called unconstitutional and illegal. Would you again seek to challenge this year's election results, even if every governor certifies the results? I'll give you two minutes. Well, Nora, first of all, I think that we're focused on the future. We need to figure out how to solve the inflation crisis caused by Kamala Harris's policies, make housing affordable, make groceries affordable. And that's what we're focused on. But I want to answer your question because you did ask it. Look, what President Trump has said is that there were problems in 2020. And my own belief is that we should fight about those issues, debate those issues peacefully in the public square. And that's all I've said. And that's all that Donald Trump has said. Remember, he said that on January the 6th, the protesters ought to protest peacefully. And on January the 20th, what happened? Joe Biden became the president. Donald Trump left the White House. And now, of course, unfortunately, we have all of the negative policies that have come from the Harris-Biden administration. I believe that we actually do have a threat to democracy in this country. But unfortunately, it's not the threat to democracy that Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz want to talk about. It is the threat of censorship. It's Americans casting aside lifelong friendships because of disagreements over politics. It's big technology companies silencing their fellow citizens. And it's Kamala Harris saying that rather than debate and persuade her fellow Americans, she'd like to censor people who engage in misinformation. I think that is a much bigger threat to democracy than anything that we've seen in this country in the last four years, in the last 40 years. Now, I'm really proud, especially given that I was raised by two lifelong blue collar Democrats to have the endorsement of Bobby Kennedy Jr. and Tulsi Gabbard, lifelong leaders in the Democratic coalition. And of course, they don't agree with me and Donald Trump on every issue. We don't have to agree on every issue, but we're united behind a basic American First Amendment principle that we ought to debate our differences. We ought to argue about them. We ought to try to persuade our fellow Americans. Kamala Harris is engaged in censorship at an industrial scale. She did it during COVID. She's done it over a number of other issues. And that to me is a much bigger threat to democracy than what Donald Trump said when he said that protesters should peacefully protest on January the 6th. One notable aspect of Vance's comments is his observation that political disagreements are fracturing. Lifelong friendship. Reflecting a broader issue of growing social polarization. Disagreements are no longer just intellectual debates, but can lead to exclusion and hostility. Vance highlights the decline of civil discourse and the spread of cancel culture as evidence of a dangerous trend where dissent is not engaged with but rather shut down. His mention of Kamala Harris's involvement in what he describes as industrial scale censorship during the COVID-19 pandemic taps into a widespread public anxiety about government overreach. He argues that regulating media under the guise of public safety or combating misinformation sets a dangerous precedent. The real solution, in his view, is more public debate, not censorship. Vance's critique is essentially a defense of the democratic principle of free speech, resonating with conservatives who see attempts to control public discourse as an attack on that freedom. His rhetoric touches on deeper psychological dynamics, the fear of losing control, the impulse to resist perceived authority, and the need for open and authentic communication. The portrayal of censorship as a major democratic threat stems from a fear that individuals are being stripped of their ability to express themselves and engage in meaningful dialogue. The desire for autonomy and agency is central to Vance's perspective. Furthermore, Vance's criticisms of Kamala Harris and the current administration carry significant emotional weight. 
by accusing Harris of advancing censorship, particularly during the pandemic, Vance channels the frustrations and fears many feel about government overreach and the suppression of alternative viewpoints. His accusations suggest that the path forward requires rejecting those who seek to impose media restrictions, allowing those who feel silenced or alienated by censorship to vent their anger and reclaim their right to participate in the conversation.